So, hi, Aging But Dangerous peeps. Is there anything better than to get a portion of sport and wellness flowing in your day? We are so honored to have a gorgeous Chris Fry talk with us today. Chris, welcome. <laughs> Thank you so much for inviting me. I feel honored to be here with you. So beautiful to have you. So let me tell several words about Chris. Chris is the sportiest 54 years old I ever met. <laughs> 55. <laughs> Whoa! You must see her hit sessions and an impressive level of fitness she has. I did your uh, hit training kickboxing today because I wanted to get as close as possible to you. <laughs> and I'm so ready for you. <laughs> I even sleep with them. <laughs> So, Chris is a health and fitness expert, a huge inspiration for almost 70,000 followers on her IG account. We will link it here. She's a founder of a streaming platform, Get Healthy UTV. She wrote several books and she's passionate about helping others to learn how to take care of themselves for their long-term health, to stay healthy, but also to become healthy too. So, you're a mom of three adult kids, happily married for 30 years. You run your own business, you write books, you are a speaker, you create new workout videos weekly, you travel a lot, you have literally very active life, still teaching group fitness. But yeah. you look amazing, fresh and strong with no traces of stress. How is that possible? <laughs> Oh my goodness, you don't know me. Of course I have stress. I have lots of stress. And I always say, you know, the older you get, the bigger your joy and the bigger your hardships. You know, that's the beautiful thing about aging is that you experience joy like you've never experienced. The joy of friendships and long lasting relationships and seeing your kids grow. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. But there's also big hardships. There's big stress. You now are probably, maybe you're owning a business. You've got parents that are failing. You've got friends that are having problems. You've got kids, you know, big kids, bigger problems. You've got you know, so many things. So yes, of course I have stress. Um, that's something that I try to help women with and help myself with at the same time. <laughs> I try to be, try to be a student of my own preaching. <laughs> <laughs> that you're doing great job. Really impressive. Um, because our time with you is so limited and we want to learn so much from you and want to get to know you better. I picked some of your precious statements that I would love to share here today. And you're welcome <laughs> to go deeper and please explain us what do you mean with it. So let us try something new. I compress and you express. <laughs> I, I love that. That's okay. I love that. That's nice. So let's start with your statement. You said, I believe you can transform your body and your mind, but I'm a realist. What does it mean? Yes. What that means is, well, so I've been a certified health coach for 20 years. I've been a certified personal trainer and group fitness instructor for over 30 years. Um, so I, 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 education is really important to me. The other thing is that as you get older, you know, bodies are not perfect. So it's bothered me over the years. It's getting better, that's for sure. But it bothers me that we sell to women a perfect body. That you can, you know, you see these women in these bikinis and they look amazing. And that, and you know, the reality is, I've worked for publishing companies and magazines. Now, not so much today because we're. I think there's a lot of good progression, but there was so much photoshopping and so much that was actually smoke and mirrors, where that's not what women look like. So my whole thing has been, you can change your body and your mind at any age, no doubt. If you are 65, you aren't going to look 40, period. I'm not going to sell that to you. I'm not going to sell to you that your skin is going to tighten up overnight and that your stomach is going to be a six pack because that's not going to happen. But here's the thing. Can you look better? Absolutely. Could you get closer to whatever that vision is? Absolutely. Do you really care? Maybe that's not even your goal. Maybe your goal is just to be stronger so you can do things, have more energy, sleep better, get through menopause, improve your relationships. People aren't always just focused on that. So that's always my thing. I'm like, be realistic. You don't have to look like a certain thing. Changing your body and your mind is personal. Does that make sense? And like, I don't even take pictures of myself rarely. Like we joke about it. Like, I'm not going to sit there and flaunt my abs or do this or that because you know what? I, I don't need to see that. I've seen plenty of women. Like, that's not what I'm 
want for people. I want for people to be them to be who they want to be. And believe me, at age 55, I got saggy skin. I got cellulite. I got wrinkles. I got, it happens. It's just life. You look amazing, really. It's so impressive. Okay, let's go to the second one. It's like speed dating. Like, you know, I never did it, but we are creative. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So, a one hour workout doesn't make up for 10 hours of sitting on your butt all day. Yep. So I always say that because people will, you know, um, pat themselves on the back that they did a workout, which is great. Do a workout. But America has become a world of sitters. We sit, sit, sit for the next eight hours, 10 hours, 12 hours. I really noticed it as a young mom. I would do my hour workout, but then I was running around. I was literally like, if, it, if I wasn't doing something for work, I was chasing kids. I was driving kids here and there. I was watching this sport. I was doing that. In my 50s now as an empty nester, after my workout, my job is very digital. I could literally sit all day. I, I literally don't have to get up except to feed myself. And so, you know, I, I always just want to remind people that active lifestyle doesn't even have, like you look in, you know, you're in Europe area, they don't always focus on the workout. They focus on just an active lifestyle. So yeah. I try to impress that upon people too, is like, if you want to make strides in your health, it's not only about that workout. It's about how can you be active? It, you know, maybe you stand up for part of the day. Maybe you do a stretching routine. Maybe you walk your dog. Maybe you walk with some girlfriends. Maybe you get on your bike and pedal easy. Maybe you, you know, who knows? There's so, maybe you dance. I mean, there's so many different ways to move your body. Perfect, okay. So the third one would be work harder, not longer. That's also very yeah. important. So I think there was this era of people who thought, okay, I want to burn fat. I'm so concerned with burning fat that I'm going to, I've heard that if you work out slower, the fuel you use is fat. Some of that is true scientifically, but at the end of the day, it's a bad message for the media to be giving to people because the average person should not worry about what fuel you're using, whether you're using body, you know, fat, as your fuel or converted sugars, glycogen, it doesn't matter. Bottom line is they're gonna work as dual engines, but work harder, burn more calories in a shorter period of time because if all you wanna do is only burn fat as your fuel, you're gonna to have to work, walk from here, you know, across the country to California to, burn, to do what you wanna do. You know, put, put a little more effort in it. Don't be afraid, get your heart rate up a little higher. Of course, I'm a proponent of baby steps. I would never tell somebody to jump into a crazy workout if they hadn't exercised in several years. Um, but my point is, don't be afraid of working a little harder. You don't have to let your workout consume your day. Perfect. Stretching is not a waste of time at all. I love that one. Oh, yeah. Stretching is not a waste of time. Let me tell you. Answer that one after you're 50. <laughs> wow. That is the difference as we are aging. Stretching is the great difference, difference maker. Um, I notice in my body, I still love high intensity. I can't do as much as I did when I'm 25. That, that doesn't mean I, I don't try and I don't go for it. I do, but I am aware of my body and say, okay, like I can't jump or go as fast, jump as high or go as fast. However, the big thing for me is recovery now. I have to recover. So I just try to fit in that recovery, the stretching, the foam rolling, um, all of that stuff that helps my body recovery to reduce injury. But the cross question, you work out every day. How long do you need to recover? So first of all, I just work out like an hour a day. Now I know I said that like an hour isn't much. I mean, an hour is a lot, but I know a lot of fitness people who like literally work out four hours a day. I'm like, are you kidding me? I don't know how you can maintain that at our age. So I work out, I get a good workout in, and then I do like 10 minutes of stretching. Now, if I practice what I preach, I am a yoga instructor. When I am scheduled to teach a yoga class, I am in it and I love it. So I need to make more time to be the student and go to the class because really I wish I did yoga twice a week. I'll be honest, I get you know 10 minute sessions here and there and then sometimes I'll do the full yoga class, but I need to do more. I definitely need to do more. I have room for improvement. Oh, yoga, yes, definitely. The magic words. Um, when we are about yoga and lifting weights and doing kickboxing and everything, you also said mixing my exercise routine up is important. Otherwise, I get bored too easily. <laughs> right. So I like variety, but that's my personality too. You know, some people love the same 
thing every day. That's how they're wired. You have to get to know yourself. When, when someone comes to me and says, what's the best workout for me? What should I do to burn the most calories? I always say, I, I have to get to know you before I can tell you that because there's no one perfect workout. So variety for me keeps me in the game. It's like, I like to wake up and go, okay, Mondays I'm doing hit. Okay, Tuesdays I'm gonna do pyramid power. Okay, Wednesday I'm gonna pick a workout from Get Healthy UTV. I'm gonna do step. Okay, Friday, you know, I love that variety because then every day I'm using my muscles a little different. It just, it's more uh, entertaining for me. Now that doesn't mean that has to be your MO. Like if you prefer, I love to do the same thing every day, do it. Honor who you are, that's what matters. To discover yourself, to find fun, to discover simply the, the, the sport that, you, that makes you happy. Oh. Right, and as you age, you know, I, I think any trainer could tell you, if I tell you to do something you don't like to do, you're not going to do it. I mean, let's just face it. You're not going to be compliant. I have to help you find my job as a trainer is to help you find what you like, what, what type of training works for you, what kind of workouts work for you. And then let me help you enhance that routine and um, make it fun. I know you're a journalist and um, yes, and you can really use the language perfectly. You can, you, you, you know how to express yourself. And especially I like your next statements. Motion is lotion and cardio is cardio. <laughs> can you tell us a little bit about it? Yeah. So motion is lotion has kind of become a signature for me again. I, you know, I'm not here. We are, we're, we're talking about aging, but over 50 crowd, all of a sudden you wake up in the morning, you're like, my back is stiff. Like, oh, you know, my husband and I joke that we look like the Tin Man when we get out of bed. Like, thank goodness there isn't a camera because we're kind of like trying to open up all our joints, which is just pretty normal. And joints have their own natural lubrication. It's called synovial fluid. It happens in your body. So when you move, like if your shoulder is stiff, but you do this a thousand times, pretty soon it might not be stiff because that synovial fluid starts to lubricate it. It's a natural lubricant. So I always say motion is lotion. Like, it's like you're lotioning your joints. So get moving. If people complain, I'm so stiff and sore, I'm just going to sit here. I'm like, no, movement is your cure. That's number one. Um, cardio is hardio. So cardio, it, it's kind of a play on words because cardio is hartio, meaning your heart. It's good for your heart. And cardio is hardio, meaning it's hard work. People will always go, oh, yeah, I don't do cardio. And it's like, well, why don't you do cardio? And usually the two things I hear is, A, I don't need it. I, you know, I'm not, I'm not trying to lose weight. Or B, it's too hard. I don't like it. You know, it's just too hard. So A, everybody needs cardio. If you have a heart in your body, I don't care if you're the right weight, the wrong way. Everybody needs cardio because heart disease is the number one killer of women in our country, in America at least, and quickly becoming the number one killer of men. So everyone needs to exercise that heart. It's a very good preventative measure for your heart. In terms of it being hard, it is hard. When your heart rate gets up, you get exasperated. It, it, you have to ease into it. You have to train your body how to use the oxygen. You have to improve your, your cardiovascular um, you know, system. And so it is hard. You have to work into it. So a lot of people skip cardio. And I'm like, mm -mm, mm -mm. you need cardio. No matter who you are, cardio should be a part of your weekly routine. But the good news is also all ladies, if you wanna lose weight, cardio is number one. Am I right? Well, cardio is, I always say it's a delicate balance of the two. So cardio is always going to be important for heart health and it's a quick calorie burn. Mm -hmm. So as our bodies are becoming more sedentary, like I said, I used to chase kids. Now I sit in this chair. I probably used to burn an extra three, 400 calories just moving around my house. Now I don't. So cardio, walking the dog, getting out there, moving is going to kind of, you know, keep that calorie um, deficit in check or that calorie in and calorie out in check. But the other thing is muscles are so important as we get older. So I can't really say that one is more important than the other because strength training truly is the gem when it comes to metabolism, when it comes to overall health, when it comes to functionality. So for women who skip the strength training and yes, they walk the dog, they tell me, oh, I walk the dog every day. Oh, I ride my bike. But then they, their joints hurt, their muscles are weak. They feel like they're gaining weight. You need muscle. So they're both beautiful. They're both beautiful. You can't pick one over the other. Perfect. Okay. Now we are two more sentences about fitness. Get started and begin with baby steps. Strive for progress, not perfection. It's so beautiful because people want to be perfect from the very beginning. And that's because they stop. Am I right? Correct. So, you know, I always tell people, one of the reasons people don't exercise is um, fear. Fear of injury and fear of it being too hard. Mm -hmm. 
So if the first workout back after being gone for a month, six months, a year, a decade, whatever, you kill yourself. Are you going to come back for more the next day? No, you're not. Because <laughs> you're going to go, I'm so sore. My elbow really hurts. My butt is killing me. You're not going to come back. I mean, the whole idea is let your body acclimate. It's smart for preventing injury. So I tell people like, don't be so overwhelmed and don't get intimidated. Just start. I mean, and I can't tell you the number of Get Healthy UTV members who come to us and say, I started with walking. I was doing your indoor walking workouts, Chris. I was walking with you. That's it. And then I graduated on to doing some strength. And then I graduated on to moving into HIT. And then I graduated on, I mean, it's a beautiful thing. So allow yourself to be a beginner and go for progress. I know I started with 10 push-ups, really, literally. I started with 10 push-ups. And my brother challenged me. He said, how long do you need? Two minutes, two minutes, not even longer. And that was my beginning. And now I end with an hour, hour and a half, something like that. And I love it. It's really true. So you said, and now again, the most important, don't start and stop, just keep going. Yes. So people love, like they do a program and they're like, oh, I'm doing a 21 day um, cleanse. Do you want to join me? And I'm like, why 21 days? <laughs> you know, oh, I'm doing a 30 day challenge. And I mean, I love challenges. We operate a lot of challenges on Get Healthy You. TV. But my whole point is like, don't have an end date all the time. Like do a challenge, but don't in your head think that's the end. So many people start and then they stop. Keep going. This is about longevity. This is about the journey. There is one magic word in fitness. There is one magic word and people will be, what is it? What is it? They want to know, right? Consistency. Mm -hmm. Consistency. It's what you do day in and day out. It's not what you do once. It's what you do day in and day out becomes a habit. It becomes a way of life. Your body adapts. You get stronger. You get healthier. You, everything changes physiologically and biologically. It, it's just amazing. So consistency is the secret pill. Love it. Let's start with food questions. Um, please explain us the two F together. You know what I mean? The two what? I'm sorry. F. F. F like Frank? Food, food, food and fitness. Okay. F like <laughs> I, was like, fitness. I wasn't sure if you said S. I apologize. Oh, the sorry. Two Fs. So food and fitness, they go hand in hand. Bottom line is though, food is the number one health decision you make every day. Food over fitness, I'm going to tell you because you can't out train a bad diet. So if you run eight miles a day, but you eat horribly and you have tons of, you know, uh, artificial flavors and colors and chemicals and your hormones are disrupted and you don't sleep well. I mean, you're not going to maybe be your best self or feel healthy or feel happy or whatever it might be. And you might even gain weight because you might be taking in too many calories. So food is the number one uh, health decision we make every day. And the thing that is so amazing is that we're in control of that. Mm -hmm. Like so many things in our lives feel out of control. And food is a decision that we personally make every day. No one's shoving food in your mouth. You are. <laughs> right? So right. it's pretty amazing when you think of it that way. Of course, fitness is amazing because it is the health of your body, but um, you can't do one alone. You need them both really as you age. I love it. Clean eating is yummy. You said, yeah. I don't like clean eating. <laughs> well, you know, clean eating has kind of become a catchphrase. And back 20 years ago, clean eating was really uncool. People were like, oh, yuck. Why are you eating all that health food? Now today it's savvy and interesting and people want to eat healthy because we want to take care of our health. But clean eating is delicious. People, it's not all about cardboard and eating, you know, like a bird or like a bunny rabbit. I mean, it is, you can do so many different things with fruits and vegetables and spices and herbs. And, you know, you can be, um, you don't have to be a vegetarian. You don't have to be a meat eater. Like you can be somewhere in the middle. I do eat grass-fed beef and I do eat chicken and I do stuff like that, but I'm very plant heavy. I'm very, you know, I love fruits and vegetables, which is why my diet is so high in carbs because fruits and vegetables are carbs. So I just think people like immediately turn to the idea of I'm eating a piece of cardboard or I'm chomping on a piece of raw broccoli with nothing on it. And that's, you know, that is not what clean eating is about. Perfect. Um, when you're talking Talking about clean eating, I know you love sweets. <laughs> and you said, I love sweets, but good balance is everything. 
Yeah. So I've always had a sweet tooth. Like, you know, some people are savory. Some people are sweet. I'm always going to go sweet. I am always going to want that cookie. I'm always going to want a huge ice cream cone. I love a carrot cake. I love dessert. I mean, so, but it's all about training yourself to be in control. So I use that 80, 20 rule when it comes to splurging, where I say 80% of the time I'm making a good choice. 20% of the time, I give myself wiggle room. Now, whether it's 80-20 on a daily basis or it's 80-20 throughout your week where you're really good throughout the weekdays and then on the weekends, you might splurge a little. And good, I hate using that word good because I I should say more thoughtful. Like I'm more thoughtful, making sure that I'm eating healthy and getting all the macronutrients, proteins, fats, and carbs so that I'm getting the micronutrients, all the vitamins and minerals my body needs to operate properly. And I try not to eat a lot of added sugar, even though I love the taste of sugar. But I do eat, like if someone offers me an ice cream cone, I'm probably going to say yes 95% of the time because I love it. And since I feel so in control of my food choices, I don't feel um, overwhelmed or out of control when I do eat a dessert. So I guess that's my point. And whenever anybody is too polar opposite, and we're seeing this in our, in our world right now with everything, politics everything that's going on in our world, right? I keep just saying, can we please just come back to the middle? It's kind of like that with food too, where it's like, if you are one extreme where you're like, I'm never going to eat a gram of sugar again in my life, you know, versus the opposite, it's going to be hard to sustain, like meet yourself in the middle, allow, because food is a celebration. I mean, food is nourishment, but food has also traditionally been used for celebration and connection when you're with other people, with your family, whatever it might be. Definitely. I have to go a little bit um, faster. Plan okay. not to eat healthy all week. You like to prepare for the week. Yep. I love to meal prep. I feel like you have to take the time. People always say, oh, I don't have time. I'm like, well, okay. Then if you don't have time, you don't have time. I mean, you got to make the time. So make the time to meal prep. Typically for me, that is a Sunday, but everybody's different. Some people meal prep on their day off of work, maybe Wednesdays are your day off or whatever, but I will just over make chicken breasts, vegetables, I'll cut up fruit. I'll just, I'll have every, I'll hard boiled eggs. I'll, I'll just prep a lot of stuff so that when I do decide to make a meal, it's quick and easy. And I don't have 20 minutes of prep for every meal that I'm, I'm making. Love it. You see, I learned so much. It's beautiful to have you here. Okay. Um, let us say about uh, something you, you call yourself a flexitarian. What does it mean? Yeah. Well, because I'm flexible with how I eat. Like I'm not a vegetarian all the time. I'm not a vegan, but I love to go to a vegan restaurant. Um, I'm not a huge meat eater, but I do eat red meat probably once every two weeks. Um, I allow myself a lot of variety. So I just feel like I'm just flexible with what's available to me and what I want to eat. Um, So that's it. Um, So me, my, uh, my, one of the gals who works for me is coming in the house right now and there's going to be a loud noise. My dog is going to bark. So can you hold on one second? Yes, definitely. Okay, hold on. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay, um, Chris, you always say you guys freaking drink water. How important is to be hydrated and to drink enough water? Well, it's a water, like, I don't know the exact stat, but like 70% of our bodies or something is water. Like water is super important. We all know the importance of water. It's probably the easiest health tip I can give anybody. And surprisingly, water changes your mood. It changes how you feel. It changes your hunger scale. It changes how you sleep. I mean, it's really, it it changes your skin. It's just a really big um, factor in your health. And it's just such an easy health tip. And nowadays, everyone walks around with a big old water bottle, which I love. Because why go buy water when you can fill your water bottle in a lot of places. So true. Okay, let's go to the mental health. That's also part of um, your coaching and it's very important. You said confidence is the best accessory you wear. Where do you find your confidence? I mean, you're a very <laughs> confident person. Um, oh, well, a lot of it has to do with feeling okay with who you are. So that's how I feel like the media needs to continue to help women understand that it's okay because, you know, here we are aging, but dangerous, you know, it's okay for men to age. It always has been okay for men to age, but for women, it's, it's harder to accept. I mean, and some people are really good at it. Like they're like, okay, I'm okay with what I look like and my hair turning gray and this and that. And then for some of us, it's like, okay, 
the wrinkles are starting to freak me out. My hair is turning gray. My skin is getting saggy. And like I was saying, I, I accept that, but you have to do a lot of self work on it. Um, I've spent a lot of time, you know, learning about feeling vulnerable, learning about how it feels for your body to be changing and understanding that who you are comes from a much deeper place than what you appear to be on the outside. And that's a lot how you gain confidence. Also surrounding yourself with people that uh, build you up like good, real people who are um, your cheerleaders. You know, you're their cheerleader. You're, and then of course, exercise. Exercise has always been a confidence booster for me. It gives me that feeling like I can do it. Like I still am capable. Like, uh, you know, when I feel like I'm, I'm in the middle of something hard, exercise for me gives me that boost of confidence and that release of stress that I need. Love it. Um, you said being in my 50s, I do know the struggles of fighting against nature and limited time. What are the most <laughs> struggles that you face, that your client face? Um, well, I think most women that I talk to in my age, menopause is really a, like a crazy time of life. And it's just not talked about a lot. You know, there's so much on childbirth, right? Like when you're pregnant now, there's so much about what's going to happen to your body and how to deal with it. But as you hit menopause, all my friends are like, wait, what is this? Like, we don't even know what it is. Like, you don't talk about it in school. Nobody taught you about it. And quite honestly, when I was like 25 or 30 and someone would talk to me about menopause, I'd be like, okay, who cares? That's like 30 years off. Like, what do I care? Now it's like, oh my gosh, it's like a really big, as crazy as pregnancy is where your body is changing. You're like, oh, oh, I'm feeling this. I'm feeling that. That's what menopause is. I mean, your hormones are changing. Um, your body is changing. You need to learn to eat differently. You need to learn how to get more sleep. You need to learn how to control some of the symptoms that are ha happening. You have, I mean, there's a lot that happens with your mood. So I feel like your fifties is really a, just an interesting time that typically is when most people are kind of getting through that menopause and menopause is so weird to me, you know, so perimenopause, premenopause can be anywhere from a couple of years to a decade, right? Yes. Menopause is really the day, the day that you know, you have not had a period for a full year. So once you, it's, it's kind of like a birthday. It's like, oh, I just hit menopause today. It's been a full year. And then you're postmenopausal after that. So weird to me. But I feel like it's a time where women need to stick together and talk to each other and help each other. You know, I'm not sure if I answered your question. I, I, I bought one of the problems with menopause is forgetfulness. I don't even, I don't even know the question. <laughs> Definitely. We talked about fitness, about health, yeah. about yeah. wellness. We talked about mental health. We talked about food. And I know that you also say, love your body. What does it mean for you? Accepting yourself. There's so much of that now on the internet, right? I mean, in a good way, there's some in a bad way, but there's a lot in a good way of really learning to get to know yourself. I think the thing for me that was the biggest was getting to um, become familiar with Brené Brown and as an author, reading her books and understanding that vulnerability is okay. Because I think anytime we've all felt vulnerability or shame, we brush it under the rug. Like you're like, oh boy, and oh, that's a horrible feeling. I'm just gonna stuff that underneath my bed, you know, that kind of feeling. And understanding that it's okay to be vulnerable and it's okay to have guilt or shame. And it's okay, you know, to not be perfect. Back to that perfect. Like you don't have to, like women will come to me and be like, you know, I've had two sets of twins and look at my stomach and I'm like, yeah, look at your stomach. You had two sets of twins. Is that freaking awesome or what? You know, I would never tell them, oh, your, your stomach's going to shrink back in a month. No, that's a lie. You know, it, it depends on what their skin looks like. It depends on how big they got. It depends on so many different things. Can they do better? Absolutely. But are they going to be perfect? Does it matter? No, because when you love yourself, those are, those things don't matter. Perfect. You just answered my next question. A life is about change. It's so true. It's really, it's, it's permanent change and we just have to accept it. We just have to be yep. here and to, to love that change. Okay. Right. I have one last question and that's the, you said Corona sucks guys. I know it's a very difficult time, but working out is the one thing that keeps me sane. Can you, yeah. can you give advice to all ladies outside that are fighting right now? Oh man, you know, it, it, it's been such a hard time to be locked down. I mean, this will go down in the history books. I never really thought about just being at home so much and about not having outside activities. I mean, I'm such a social person, you know, 
I laugh because some people are like, oh, I love COVID. I just get to stay in my house, you know. But for me, like my life is so much about socializing and being with others and going places and traveling. And so all of a sudden to just say you're here, again, you're not moving much. You're not burning many calories. You're feeling perhaps um, emotional and, and vulnerable and worried. And, you know, a lot of people were going through tumult uh, tumultuous times with their jobs and their families. And so it is a really hard time. So the one thing, you know, eating healthy, I should say maybe two things because you're eating healthy is going to be your saving grace. I mean, keep your body healthy and move because movement therapy is used to treat depression patients. Movement therapy is used to help people deal with anxiety. So exercise is such a good thing. And now because of the pandemic, at home exercise has really become a norm, which is obviously good for our business being a streaming service. You know, so even three years ago, people would say, well, yeah, I like to go to the gym. And now people are going, okay, well, I can exercise at home. I don't have to commute. I don't have to waste time. Because again, like I said, your workout isn't your whole day. Your workout is just your thing that keeps you happy, healthy, whatever. The rest of your day is like your whole life. So if you can get your workout done at home and then move on, isn't that great? Definitely. So Chris, thank you so much for being our guest, for sharing your knowledge and your experience and your beautiful uh, energy with us here by Aging with Dangerous. And we'll link all channels where we can find you. Thank you so much for being such a huge inspiration for us. Thank you. It's so nice to talk to you. I really appreciate it. Bye. Bye.